What's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of MP Nation Podcast. Ooh, we got a good guest today. We got my man Bill Phillips, a legend. I'm, I, I can't wait to talk to this guy because, you know, I always idolized Arnold, but then when I got into the business of supplements, it was this guy right here. We got my man Josh Hatchett, social media director, coming from behind the camera with some triceps over there, <laughs> and we're looking forward to having some fun. So, Bill... Thanks for coming all the way out here to the social media headquarters in Ohio. Uh, we're excited to have you. And how you doing, man? Good. I'm doing good. And and thanks for having me out. I don't know if people uh, can understand, but every one of the guys that's on the staff here has got the tricep and the <laughs> biceps going. Everybody's yeah. looking good. What have you guys been doing over yeah, here? Yeah, you know, we got, hey, you know what's so amazing? You put a whiteboard in a gym that has lifts on it. And, it, and some things can happen. We got Sean Lott Films on the red camera. We got right. Jay Azeltine on camera one, B. Perry on camera two, Cody D. on Periscope, and Danny always flexing over there in the corner. <laughs> so we got it going on. The staff's been uh, great. We're excited about the podcast. And so we're going to get it started, Bill. We just need a, a little bit of background on uh, some fitness journey and just kind of what got you into right. lifting weights and what how did this, how did this happen, man? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was um, like you. In uh, that, you know, I saw Arnold's first photos and, and, and Arnold in the magazines back in the, geez, the late 70s. When were you born? Uh, 78. Okay, so about the time you were born, I was started <laughs> lifting those concrete. He just said, I'm an OG. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm over 50, and um, uh, I've been following Arnold since I was about 14 years old. And uh, it just got me in, into, you know, formal weightlifting. Mm -hmm. But I was uh, an exercise coach from age nine. Okay. I got involved in Little League football when I was uh, nine years old, mm -hmm. and I was different than the other kids. Um, I'm the one that liked the practice and the calisthenics and the push-ups and the sit-ups yeah. more than the games. Like the workout part. And That's so cool. <laughs> the, the, by the third or fourth practice, the uh, coach, mm -hmm. he goes, well, Phillips, he goes, you, you run them through the calisthenics, <laughs> and then we'll get the, the practice started. Leading at nine. Yeah. There so I, was, I love it. I was uh, an exercise coach first at age nine. Wow. And and then I just loved it. I, I got into weightlifting when I was 14 and mm -hmm. then bodybuilding and powerlifting. And um, it was just something that I had a tremendous enthusiasm for. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you never, you don't really have to be at the best at something if you have a tremendous enthusiasm for it. Sure. And so I just, it overflowed from me. And uh, I love teaching people how to exercise. And so today... Let's see, uh, 41 years later, I'm doing the same thing. Yeah. You know, I have a gym in Colorado. Can't stop it, huh? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I have a gym in Colorado um, called the Transformation Center, and oh. I teach people how to work out. But um, going way back there, um, <laughs> when I was a teenager, I never imagined that I'd uh, get the opportunity to, to, to kind of make this my calling and make this my um, my life. Because yeah. now I want to be teaching exercise until I take my last breath you just know like I mean? jack o'lane yeah. yeah it's like come on two more yeah, <laughs> yeah yeah exactly i mean you know what's 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 cool for all of us that that get to work in this industry is it becomes such a passion and a hobby first yeah. for sure and then when you get to do it for your job you just feel so blessed i think that's the key to making it work you guys have been uh, successful um and you know i enjoy your programs and i follow you on the instagram and and uh, your workouts and I've, I've i've seen so many People benefit from what you're teaching them, yeah, and, and and you know you. I learned it from you. you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> well, we learned it from from Arnold. Yeah. <laughs> um, it really does start um, there, but you have a tremendous enthusiasm for it. You're consistent with it, and your whole staff, you know, lives that. And 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 that's really one of the things that's special about the Muscle Farm company that a lot of people don't know that I really enjoy. Yeah, but that's what, pretty cool. What appealed to you when you first got into it? What was kind of the the thing that you know, gave you the bug, you know, whether it's, you know, the, the skinny kid who just yeah. wanted to get bigger and stronger, better self-esteem. What was it when you're at, you know, 9 through 14 that, that just was that bug to make you passionate right. about this? Um, if I look back now, I like the, I mean, I can remember the feeling of getting a pump. I you love know, it. I remember the feeling of doing push-ups and, uh, you know, I would I would try to do five more push-ups every mm -hmm. week, you know, and I sure. got to where I could do 265 push-ups without stopping and, I was competing Your in goal these. goal focus <laughs> then, even. <laughs> right. So it was making progress, mm -hmm. and it was the, the feeling of accomplishing goals and how that em empowered you. Um, and then also just, just the feeling of the pump and, and working mm -hmm. out. It really was, um, uh, you know, it, it was something that just I, I, I just loved doing. You know, a lot of – it was, you know, it, it, was a, it was a hobby, but it was also – 
I hate to say a, a drug, yeah. but I but mean, it is. some kids get into... It's called uh, self-esteem. Yeah, yeah. Some, yeah <laughs> the drug is self-esteem. <laughs> um, you know, but some people get into uh, drinking or smoking or, you know, in, in Colorado, you know, weed is legal and a lot of people get into <laughs> yeah, right. to that. But I got into exercise and I liked that feeling. Yeah. And then I liked the, the idea that you could set a goal mm-hmm. and achieve it. And still today, uh, I don't care who you are, as successful as, as, as you are, Corey... Um, there's still few things as satisfying as achieving a worthwhile yeah, goal. I heard that. That's why I always preach about you got to go from one goal to the next. And yeah. if not, it's like hard to keep a focus. Just like we talked about your bench press last time. Right. <laughs> You're going to bench press 300 to 315 again soon. Well, I came a long way to get back up to 300 pound bench press. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, two days ago, I did 280 for five reps. Ooh. Um, <laughs> That means you can bench 300. Brian just uh, benched 300 for the first time. Oh, did he? Yesterday. Uh, congratulations. 280 man. for a triple, then did 295, then 300. Okay, awesome. Yeah. yeah. So awesome. We, saw, we just saw it happen here. Yeah. <laughs> um, those are things that are uh, that make it really fun. Yeah. And and to me, it's uh, how do you get there? You know, to set the personal goals and and uh, achieve them, that's what the nutrition is about. That's yep. what the supplements are about. And, and that's what the training routines are about and the rest and recovery discipline is about and you make it your own sport yeah so when did like now we're you know in the high school years or whatever when did you say all right i want to be a bodybuilder i'm going to move to california like uh-huh. when was that be start, when did that start to become the dream or the next goal to yeah. go and truly like live out that part right. of your life well i would read the uh i would read everything arnold wrote mm-hmm. and uh that was my playbook you know so he uh started bodybuilding when he was a teenager and he you know won some bigger and bigger contests i um when i was 17 i i did the you know won the teenage mr colorado and then when i was 18 i went out and uh, there was like a western uh, america championship and you win that and you go to the teenage mr america contest which was outside of boston Mm -hmm. massachusetts back in the day so i got to the teenage mr america contest did well there and then i thought well now i'm ready to (laughs) move to venice california that's awesome and um i finished uh Uh, high school Mm -hmm. and uh, I had a straight A student but the uh, graduation uh, conflicted with the state powerlifting contest so I went to the state powerlifting I like where where it's going I like where it's going and I missed uh, graduation I think I'm might have been valedictorian, but I got third place in the powerlifting contest. I think I, yeah, I, think I might have been valedictorian. <laughs> you still remember the, <laughs> the hell out of here? <laughs> I, 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 I bombed out on my squat that day. Uh, and just, oh. <laughs> but That's you classic. know, but uh, competing and participating is what I enjoyed. And mm-hmm. sometimes you got first, sometimes you got third. I, but I, I just loved it. I, mm-hmm. I loved it. So I moved to California, and um, at that time I was, uh, uh, you know, doing uh, personal training. Mm-hmm. I'd coach you through. Mm-hmm. An hour of exercise for eight dollars. Do you got eight dollars? You, go. you got yeah. nice. <laughs> I pay you eight bucks to work out, Bill. How's that sound? For a <laughs> but, now my rate has changed over the years, you might imagine. I'm, Inflation, I'm, jeez. I'm, I'm a now few up, more zeros. I'm now up to ten and a half dollars. <laughs> so any of you out there listening, if you want some personal training instruction in the EAS days, if you could have got Bill Phillips for eight dollars for personal training, that would have been classic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm up to ten and a half dollars now. I think. Um, but uh, I moved to California, and I, and, and I, you know, kept pumping the weights. Mm-hmm. And back then, uh, there was some big guys living in Venice. And when, it, when's this, like, 80, 80 what? 85. Okay. All right. I mean, it really was the mecca back then. Oh, yeah. Um, n- nowadays, Gold's Gym uh, still has some of that element, but it's not, you know, purely hardcore. It's, yeah. it's corporate. Definitely and, not. Yeah. But back then, it was the – it was. Uh, Hard. That's like uh. So who was winning Olympia then? Lee Haney. Lee Haney would yep. Been, yeah. So yeah. So yeah. the guys were just starting to really get big yeah. at that point too. So that's after Arnold. Yeah, and uh, you had guys like uh, Tom uh, Platt. Tom Platt. Awesome. And uh, Frank Zane was done at that I point. I love Frank Zane. He was the. You could have yeah. stopped right there. Oh, I mean. Man. Yeah. So, but what? It, here's here's the thing that that uh, the epiphany. This mm-hmm. is the turning point for me, is that I realized being out there for six months. But there were guys that were just ungodly huge, big yeah. arms. And not only were they so massive, mm-hmm. but uh, those were the guys that were winning the contest. Yeah. And, and I've always thought that a, a physique like yours, um, a physique like Frank Zane's, yeah. should have been the ideal. Just keep saying those in the same yeah. category. It's okay. <laughs> Go ahead. But, <laughs> and, 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 and it's true, though. It's true. Uh, hopefully we can put up a little picture of you. Next to Frank Zane here. Get out of here. Arnold um, did say that, too. I'm just saying. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> um, and Arnold was, you know, he had a yeah. different physique, too. He was not 
you know, just layers on layers yep. of, of um, That's why uh, his is timeless. Classic and aesthetics yeah. and yeah. everything. Yeah. That's why it's yeah. timeless. Symmetry and, um, you know, that symmetry and how the, you know, the brain reads it um, mm-hmm. doesn't change. That's what classic You think if you'd is. have been a few years uh, younger – or old, I guess what, if you'd have been in Venice like in 78, 79, mm-hmm. you would have kept going. But instead of the time frame you ran into, you doubt it a different a good, direction. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, Corey, that's a good point because I think I would have been uh, competitive in the 70s. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, that's what I look like. I'm thinking, <laughs> yeah. like, well, that's a t- Frank Zane's somewhat attainable. You yeah. see or Ronnie Coleman, and outside, it's, that's yeah. just yeah. not happening. Oh. <laughs> so, you, I mean, and, and um, – you're working out with those guys at the at the gym, yeah. And uh, you finally realize, well, everybody's doing steroids. Uh, yeah. So you know, when in Rome, you know, you you do what the Romans do. So I started using uh, different kinds of steroids mm-hmm. back then. I was about uh, 20 years old. Sure. And uh, but that's honestly that's like supplements at that time. I want to like put that in context. It's much different than yeah. it is now. But I, you I have think. you know you had back then you had uh, gym bag. Um, desiccated liver tablets, some, um, some uh, crappy proteins, some yeah. steroids, some yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some lifting <laughs> lifting gloves. It's a whole different and, era. And chalk. Um, but I learned right away is that uh, um, even though they they help you add muscle, mm-hmm. it isn't anywhere near what what I was expecting that they so would do. There's genetics on top of it that some people just have that yeah. proprioceptor difference. It's just a whole different ballgame. Yeah. And 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 long story short, I realized that. Um, it wasn't going to happen for me, mm-hmm. not not through that path. So um, I was, about, you know, about 20, 21, and uh, I, I pretty much packed up my bags and uh, left California, came back to Colorado, and I said, mm-hmm. well, I'll find another way to make this, you know, passion for exercise and building the body mm-hmm. and, and energizing the body, and uh, I wanted to go to medical school. So okay. I, I kind of had... Uh, hit the end of the road with bodybuilding, and that was the last time I competed in bodybuilding mm-hmm. was 1985. Oh. Um, and I and I th- and I thought, well, the steroids, you know, is is definitely not going to be good for your lifestyle in the long it's not possible, term. Yeah. And um, not just the legal, or not just the health aspects, but mm-hmm. they were becoming increasingly more illegal. Yeah. Um, and everybody that fully was using illegal. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and, and then, and you know, in controlled substances after 1988, after the Ben Johnson ordeal at the uh, Seoul uh, yeah. uh, Olympics. So I, I, I really learned a lot, and I thought that it was a great lesson to learn at 20 mm-hmm. so that I could move in a different direction. Some people I see still today live, <laughs> living out of suitcases, taking tons of steroids, um, taking tons of insulin, using tons of filler, um, and really living at this extreme excess it's still crazy. pursuing this bodybuilding dream, which um, it's changed. Yeah, it isn't going <laughs> to happen. So I got more into the fitness side of it, and and uh, which is health and yeah. fitness. Yeah, that's yeah. where some people I think miss, right, Josh? It's yeah. like this it's is supposed health, to yeah. be healthy. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, bodybuilding should be in the X Games. It, um, yeah. It, you know, the real bodybuilding should be in the X <laughs> Games. It has nothing to do with health. <laughs> no. You know, like I said, you know. Uh, all right. Next up on stage, we're gonna see this guy. He's gonna he's gonna do some poses. He's 300 pounds. He's five feet tall, and his body percent two and a half two and a half percent body yeah. fat. <laughs> next, we're gonna see a guy try to jump, uh, triple flip his uh, snowmobile and land on a flat surface. It's basically that and, crazy. And you're watching both of them because oh my god, this guy's he might get killed. Freak show. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So when you so now that you have come back to Colorado and you know. Are you thinking what's the next step? I know you're getting back into fitness. Is it right to business with Metrex at that mm-hmm. point? Where where's the kind of where do you bridge the gap from when you came home from Venice? Um, so I came back to Colorado mm-hmm. and uh, I wanted to be a physician. And one of the things I realized is that I didn't have uh, money for tuition. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. um, I grew up in Golden, Colorado, which is a real blue collar town. Everybody mm-hmm. drinks the Coors beer there. It's yeah. where they make it. Everybody works at the, at the beer plant. Um, and it's real blue collar and nobody really pays attention to who's got, you know, the most, um, you know, maybe you don't need fancy stuff. We drive trucks and wear sure. blue jeans and, and everybody works hard. That's where your work mentality comes from. Yeah. Like and it. I'm still very blue collar. Absolutely. So <laughs> am I. Um, even though I'm gray collar today, I got a blue collar, <laughs> um, spirit and I, I love, I love working. Absolutely. Um, so I, I decided that I was going to, um, do personal training and, mm-hmm help people develop nutrition programs, exercise programs, and help them learn what's really involved in bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. I just shared what I knew and what I was excited about with people, and I made a business out of that. And I used that money to pay for my tuition. 
Okay. And I built a little mail order business, and I'd advertise in the back of Robert Kennedy's Muscle Mag yeah. International, <laughs> little classified ads or little ads. That's for, cool. And I started writing a newsletter and selling my workout programs or selling the, the insight that, you know, my mm-hmm. bodybuilding story, what yeah. I had learned. Um, you've always been able to tell the story right. Yeah, I feel like that's sure. like what you're, you've done great yeah. your whole entire career. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but I just speak from the heart. I, I, I say what uh, happened to me. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I've always been real un- uninhibited about bodybuilding and steroids and mm-hmm. letting people know what works and what doesn't. Mm-hmm. And I think that's important is that because there's a, a yeah. lot of other people that are going down that path. And if they don't know what, yeah. what it well, involves... Yeah, people don't want to read about. They want to read about real life stories. They right. want to know real life, you know, situations, not something that just sounds canned or made Fake up or bullshit. something to, to, to sell. So my my uh, mail order business um, kind of grew, mm-hmm. and I would go to school in the daytime, and then I'd do my homework, and then I'd go buy my PO box. In the old days, you didn't have no internet. You know, okay, I actually I, I actually didn't use a computer until after I had left EAS. We were using fax machines and memos. <laughs> fax <laughs> your million dollar order to <laughs> Bill Phillips. <laughs> Fax was the, the technology. You know, one thing I want to touch on before we go further is personal training taught me how to run my own business so well. And I wonder if you kind of got that same thing from it because really you're a business owner like that. And it's almost yeah. like a barber shop or that type of service industry. Do you think personal training really taught you basics? Yeah. Well, you, you're doing personal training and you, um, you, ha- you have to do business uh, you know, to su- support that. I didn't go into business. Yeah, I went into personal training. I went into coaching. I went into teaching people, people how to body. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I think that um, it's 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 like this, Corey. I didn't go into writing. You yeah. know, I wrote a book that six million people bought. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, I didn't. I never uh, wanted to be a writer. But yeah. I had a message. Sure. And I needed a vehicle to carry the words that express the message that like communicated it. the ideas and feelings and, and concepts. It was the outlet. Yeah. yeah. So it, it, it's that same thing. You know, you don't want to, I didn't want to be a business person. I didn't want to be a writer, but I used both of those um, as tools, you know, yeah. to help me deliver my, my That's message. That's the platform that was able to get the message out to yeah. the degree that it did, which was, I mean, super life changing for a lot of people. Yeah. Well, thank you. I, 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 um, uh, I never intended any of it. I didn't sit down one day and say, well, gosh, I'm going to be a millionaire and everybody's going to be following or many people around the world will be following my programs. Dude, I was just looking for how do I get the rent paid and how do I get my tuition paid? And the business actually awesome. um, uh, started to take off. Yeah. And I was doing more and more with my mail order business mm-hmm. and, and uh, it started to crowd out my university studies. Mm-hmm. So yes. that was like your ebooks would be nowadays, right? Your mail order business, essentially, if we had to think about what it would be in today's definitely. times. That's yeah. not right, Josh? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Good. Yeah, I mean, you, you deliver it all now through the computers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but back then, paper and ink, and that's what, mm-hmm. what we were we were using. Um, and it was really um, a, a kind of a decision. I took a year off of pursuing my uh, medical school um, to work on my business. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, then I'll, I'll work on the business for a year. Then I'll have enough to really pay for my uh, graduate work and um, become a doctor. You probably well, made more not being a doctor. <laughs> I took a year <laughs> off. And by the time, by the time that year was done, I was making more than a physician. Oh, way more. Yeah. And um, that's I hilarious. Le- and and um, you know, fate has a way of of kind of carrying you or bringing you um, to your intentions. Mm-hmm. And I look back now and I realize that as a physician, I would have really only got the opportunity to work with people once they were sick. Yeah. yeah. And being a trainer or being a coach or being somebody who can really communicate how to eat, how to exercise, how to lose body fat, how to kind of be in more control of your body mm-hmm. um, at any age and for any purpose, whether you're an athlete or just want to get in, in great shape. Um, I get to work with people before they get sick. Yeah. And I say the best time to get well is before you get ill. Yeah. Yep. Keep them healthy, not and wait till it's already too far gone. Yeah. And so I found a, a, my own way, you know, to practice, uh, you know, medicine. Yeah. That's, that's cool. Yeah, that's yeah. one thing I want to ask you about is just you really became passionate about transforming people's lives through, through that way where, you know, bettering themselves inside and out. Um, what was it about that uh, that process that really appealed to you and, and working with people that way? Yeah. What moved the needle, like, in yeah. your head that you couldn't wait for that to see again on each person or, right. you know, story? Well, again, um, so uh, my expertise was uh, helping people – uh, you know, gain healthy muscle mm-hmm. and, and lose the body fat and really 
get a sustainable, you know, practical program, you know, and, and going for them. Now, in 1993, I got invited down to work with the Dallas Cowboys uh, by one of their That's pretty cool by their strength coach, a guy named Mike Wojcik, who went on to get, you know, he's probably got six Super Bowl rings. He went uh, to the New England Patriots and is their oh, strength wow. coach. Um, but he uh, he had followed my writing and and uh, invited me down to work with some of the guys in Arlington. Texas in 1993 and 94, mm-hmm. and I was working with guys like Mark Stepnowski and Leon Lett. And, and How Dar- much of a freak was Leon Lett? Daryl Johnston. Just a freak athlete. <laughs> yeah. Well, these guys would show up back in the old days. They'd show up 50, 60 pounds of oh, yeah. weight. They were just chilling in the offseason. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's how they looked at it, I think. Yeah, yeah, They're yeah. like, I'm off work. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so I was the diet guy, okay. you know, for, for about a dozen guys for the Dallas Cowboys. And we'd take them over to the Cooper Clinic and, mm-hmm. and uh, do, back in those days, the dunk tank, the hydrostatic oh, yeah, weight. Actually, yeah, I did that and, before. And um, then 30 days later, 35 days later, we'd take them back. And I'm telling you, man, when they followed this program, and it was just basic bodybuilding, yeah. um, but for football players, uh, they looked like they were on a Russian steroid program or something. You oh, said, sure. You, you had guys. Well, their genetics are already freaky, yeah. so they're not even tapping into them. You'd have guys losing 28 pounds of fat and putting yeah. on 25 pounds of muscle. Wow. Um, and that was hydrostatic weighing in, in 30 days. So I got an, a reputation there for helping the guys, and then I got invited to work with the uh, uh, Denver Broncos in 97, 98. And being a Denver guy, yeah. I mean, that had to be insane, I'm <laughs> sure. Yeah. So, I mean, and, and in those years, um, John Elway was playing. It was his last two years. and mm-hmm. So it went from working with athletes to um, really taking what I learned in bodybuilding, teaching it to – Football players, baseball players, mm-hmm. um, and 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 the real mainstream athletes that didn't consider bodybuilding mm-hmm. uh, a tool for them before they that. didn't know. You know? They didn't know yet. Yeah, but it's our way of eating, our way of training, mm-hmm. that really builds an athletic body. So I did. I, I I did that work, and then working with real people um, through my magazines and mm-hmm. supplement companies, I noticed. Um, and this wasn't the intention that well, we're going to change your life. <laughs> yeah. No, it's just like look, you don't have to feel like that you don't have to look like that you can feel better you can look better you can transform your body from fat to fit from scrawny to brawny and you can really really enjoy the process i didn't know about the psychological changes that we'd see and i didn't know about the you know the esteem and the the transformation of a person's spirit almost the change of heart that they would have so that that was only through observation in the rearview mirror. Once again, that I realized can make just a huge yeah. change in somebody's life and the personal growth that people went through Absolutely. when they, we confirmed that. So Body for Life was really right about the time that we were noticing. For all y'all at um, home, this Body for Life right here, published in. 90, uh, 1999, yeah. 1999. Yeah, June of 1999. And it says number <laughs> one New York Times bestseller, <laughs> six to seven million copies. Uh, it was the first. Well, <laughs> again, too, you look back. The uh, pretty cool. The, the publisher ran um, twenty thousand copies, and they they were you know pretty unenthusiastic. They thought it might sell twenty thousand copies. You're like chump. <laughs> yeah. Well, we sold you know like forty thousand copies in pre-orders on Amazon. Uh, that was back in, in the day, wow. and um, they uh, so they printed some more, and then they printed some more. And Did I you remember, a favor and printed a couple more? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, and with that book, um, I had uh, made a decision early on that you know, I, and I've never really tried to sell my um, programs mm-hmm. once I started the supplement companies. And I like that with with Muscle Farm is that you guys give instruction, you give programs, um, uh, you give coaching, and and you give expert advice for free. Lead with value. Yeah, yep. and then I learned that from you, Bill. Yeah, but that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I believed in. So I donated it, all the uh, money that would have gone to me mm-hmm. to the Colorado Make-A-Wish Foundation, or actually Make-A-Wish Foundation around the world, um, 83 chapters uh, from the Body for Life book. And we were able to grant over 600 kids' wishes. Wow. Any, of, any of those stand out? Was, so you're I saying... Mean, obviously <laughs> all of them. What, what wait, wait, hold on. Time off for a second. Yeah, yeah. You're saying all the proceeds from this? All the proceeds that would have gone to me. Went, went to Make-A-Wish. Make so a you wish. foregoed your... And had 600 wishes yeah. granted? Yeah. Bill, no wonder you're so blessed. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, I figured if I got I to didn't f- know that. If I got to 50, and that's the only thing I ever did. Yeah. Was um, you know dedicate uh, you know some of my um, good luck and success to to yeah. Make a Wish. That, that I said, man, e- even that would be 
um, enough that you should you could rest uh, <laughs> rest easy, homie. Yeah, you could rest <laughs> easy on. That's uh, that's unbelievable. Yeah. Hey, you know, it's funny because I was just thinking, I'm really want a combat crunch bar right now. Jay, <laughs> can you get me one? It's the MP Nation podcast, so we can grab Danny, grab grab one for each of us because we're gonna be here a while. We got some good stuff going on. Yeah, there's a you know there's <laughs> these uh, the only thing that I the only complaint I have about the bars is they're hard to get. Yeah, because um, <laughs> they're so good. <laughs> my, my my wife Maria uh, goes around and she goes to like four GNCs to try to you know get what she can, and yeah. they don't always have the flavors I want, you know, because I like the um, the cinnamon twist. And oh, yeah, I, it tastes I, like a pop tart. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I like the. Um, uh, uh, cookies and cream. Yeah, yeah. cookies and cream. Tastes like yeah. a s'more. It tastes and like she a, has to like a bunny that you get on uh. Easter morning. <laughs> well, they're twenty grams of they're, right, Sean Lott. They're, yeah, <laughs> they're twenty grams of protein. Um, they're easy on my belly, and um, a great uh, glycemic uh, response. Hey, so, you know what? Talk yeah. about the Metrics bars, the early days. So, oh, Bill, yeah. you, what was your position at Metrics uh, back in the early nineties? Okay, so um, backtracking. Um, one of my uh, readers of my newsletter was also a, a, a guy named Dr. Scott Conley. And he yeah, was a pretty smart guy. Yeah, a wonderful mind. I mean, um, just a, a brilliant doctor who worked in critical care medicine mm-hmm. um, in California in 1990, 1990 1991. Um, and he and I would talk about, you know, how to how to build muscle. He, mm-hmm. was, uh, he was a real uh, um, uh, bodybuilding fan, mm-hmm. and he, he liked staying healthy and he was a serious doctor that worked on a critical care team, mm-hmm. um, and um, oh my gosh, we got uh, yeah, we're good. <laughs> Thanks, Cody D. Yeah, we got a couple different varieties here. We're good to go. Oh, these are the little squirt bars. Yeah. These are the little sample <laughs> bars. <laughs> Combat. So crunch. Conley, did he just come straight to you? Yeah, Bill? Conley and I started talking about um, muscle building mm-hmm. and and uh, and anabolism and anti-catabolism and different. Uh, you know, ways and different uh, uh, techniques for building mm-hmm. muscle. Sure. And, you know, I had studied, not only had I had the experience of taking steroids when I was young, mm-hmm. um, but I, you know, I studied in depth how they alter the muscle building process. Mm-hmm. And uh, the doctor had studied this thing, uh, these same, same types of things too. So um, we, we shared that interest, but Dr. Conley was way ahead of me on the nutritional side. And he had really done. Was he pretty jacked up too? I know this is kind of a weird <laughs> question, but I mean, did he look like he knew what the hell he was talking about? On um, top of, uh, I know, I don't know, you want to throw him under the bus, <laughs> but he knew his shit though. Yeah. Oh my okay. god. Yeah. Dr. I've Conley, always heard that about him. Just brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. How's that bar? Hmm. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm 12 and I'm eating a pop tart. <laughs> <laughs> I get it stuck in my teeth. I'm <laughs> doing the rest of the interview with like look like I'm missing a t- <laughs> <laughs> tooth. <laughs> <laughs> you look so good when while you're eating that. Yeah. Oh. Uh, sometimes we got to feed the machine, Bill. <laughs> so <laughs> well, you, whatever you're doing is working, man. Keep it up. So what do you? What? Yeah. How did it go from meeting Dr. Conley to saying, right. "I'm going to start this supplement, your first, you know, supplement venture." Right. Which is hilarious because Metrics is still sold everywhere. I mean, this yeah, is right. it's survived the test of For time sure. too. Yeah. Yeah. Metrics and EA, EAS yeah. um, are both uh, brands that are going on their third decade, um, and are and are still uh, going strong. You know, people use them every day you know, as part of their fitness program or to help get better results, you know, faster from their workouts. Mm-hmm. Um, so the doctor was talking about a formula that he had developed um, uh, in his critical care practice. And his his uh, objective was looking at how do you help patients in the hospital mm-hmm. um, stay stronger and get out of the, the hospital faster. And, and we kind of teamed up on some... So pro- like muscle wasting, basically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because you go in the hospital for heart surgery and then you end up staying because the body's just so weak oh, and yeah. you atrophy. Um, and and the mus- it's it's stunning how fast the body throws off muscle. I have a story sedentary. about that. So my grandfather, who I've spoke to you about, lifts weights, a top man to lift weights. He's in his 80s, and he's been sick twice. Now, he's 6'2", 220, at almost 90 years old. He lifts weights his entire life. He went into the hospital sick with an infection um, at 220 and came out at 205 and recovered fine. His doctor told him straight up, if you would have came in at 205 – and ended up out of here at 180, you probably would have died. Wow. He said, your direct immune system, it, your immune system is direct to the muscle mass. That's what helps you fight it off. I mean, that's what then, and he found that out twice, and he said, right. I would have been six feet under if I wouldn't have been lifting weights all them years, and he really believes that, and I, I saw it on him. Right. Yeah, I think that's a good point, uh, too, is that, you know, the immune system, um, the, the heart health, the, yeah. the, I mean, the way the brain, uh, the neurotransmitters, and, and the whole chemical system of the body, um, it works so much better when you have uh, a healthy 
amount of lean body mass. Absolutely. And if you go into the hospital week, yeah. um, and then you go through the stress of the process or, yeah. or the surgery. It's all where you start at. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, going back to Dr. Conley's research, he had, he had demonstrated that certain protein moieties, amino acid combinations, uh, protein fractions and biologically active uh, peptide chains mm -hmm. um, had an almost drug-like effect mm. on the body's ability to retain muscle. And it wasn't through increasing anabolism by the mm -hmm. buildup of muscle, which is what steroids did. Sure. But it was by decreasing catabolism, which gotcha. was the breakdown. And that's a natural process that the, the body goes through. It builds up and it breaks down, builds mm -hmm. up and breaks down. And if you want a net increase in muscle, yeah. you got to either <laughs> yeah. speed up. <laughs> you got to either speed up the... Uh, you know, the, the, the anabolism or yeah. slow down the catabolism. Mm -hmm. And so we looked at that balance and we really looked at what um, bodybuilders and athletes have in common with people that are uh, going through stress and are, are suffering muscle wasting and atrophy. Um, we, as athletes and, and weightlifters, we uh, intentionally injure ourselves. Sure, to yep. build back up. Yeah, yeah. To, yep. to, to build back up and to stimulate that process. So, Was your we, mind blown when he said, and this is how you do it even better? Yeah, well, you, you, uh, Dr. Conley, um, you have to really listen, and, and I recorded what he said, and I go back okay. through it. You have to do, um, almost like decode it. <laughs> yeah, some dudes are you know, so smart. Either, like yeah. in uh, English, <laughs> I know Mario Di Pasquale, who I learned yeah. some stuff off of. Like he would send me an email, and I'd have to like do research to answer it back. I mean, I was like right. so over my head. It was unbelievable. You're you're you dig into those things a little <laughs> bit more than I do, but it's it's one of those things where you got somebody that's that smart that's breaking it down on a cellular level. Right. You're just like it just blows my mind. Like for example, he would say um, uh, nutritional surveillance. Mm -hmm. Which means just watch what you fucking eat. Oh, okay. <laughs> but that's how he said it. <laughs> I need some surveillance. Uh, you know, surveillance. We could, yeah. or, or, or we could we could we could augment the lean tissue compartment of the body. Yeah. Or we just get the muscles bigger. <laughs> um, so he was uh, a, a brilliant mind, and Dr. Conley. I'm so grateful to him to this day because I was able to work with him and bring his uh, technology mm -hmm. um, into the industry, and I. Helped him get the metrics product out of, and he didn't yeah. want to do this. He didn't want to take his life's uh, research and work and, mm -hmm. and turn it into a bodybuilding supplement. Out of the medical, that's interesting. What, right. made, what made you want to do that then? Um, I saw a good the opportunity. Yeah, I saw the application of it. I, yeah. We never imagined that we were going to make any money at it. I just yeah. knew that I wanted it for myself. <laughs> 30 years later, it's still yeah. in business. Yeah. Yeah. I like how he's like, well, I really didn't want to be in business. I wasn't sure we were going to make any money. <laughs> I, I didn't want to write. Are they going to write a couple <laughs> books? Yeah. It's, you know what's so cool, though, is that you're still so humble out of all these things you've accomplished, Bill, because you weren't, you're intentional on changing people. That's never changed. Yeah. But the things that have come from that are pretty pretty wild. Yeah, I think it's easy to stay humble when you when – you, um, you know, stay aware of your own um, uh, mistakes. You know, I can, uh, Dr. Conley, for example, um, and, and I could go on and on about uh, how the body works and the science and mm -hmm. whatnot, but the guy couldn't find his car keys, you know, so. <laughs> uh, what's that say for me? I can't find my <laughs> cell phone half the time. <laughs> Maybe there's greatness in that. What do you think, Danny? <laughs> No, I think I think people see the highlight reel, you know what I mean? And especially with um, uh, some of my work, I've had some good fortune. And Metrix uh, was a, a success. We went from doing one box. Uh, um, we sold the first box in 1991, and in 1994, we did 70 million in sales. And all we had how, was... What was the... How many years were you at Metrix? And how uh, four was years. So from zero to 70 in four. Yeah. No internet, people. Yeah, There's no, no internet <laughs> then. Uh -uh. And Jeez. we had one SKU. We had... Uh, a 20 pack of uh, vanilla um, Metrex. They go, you, well, I would like it in chocolate. We'll get some fucking cocoa powder. <laughs> dude, <laughs> dude. Wait, hold on. Put, put it in there. One one product. <laughs> yep. One one product. One SKU. Seventy million dollars yeah. in four years. Wow. Yeah. My mind, my mind's a little bit blown. My mind's a little yeah. bit blown by that. What, what do you think? <laughs> touched or what what do you think hit the public to be able to do that what yeah. do you what do you think you were able to reach in, in doing that you know here's here's a couple things that really led into that um uh one is that the product actually worked it, yeah. produ yeah. it produced a discernible effect is that you, when you were working out hard and you started taking metrics um you really noticed the difference sure. and maybe it wasn't as pr as uh uh, tastes just like combat crunch, right? <laughs> yeah. No, it no. tasted it, it tasted awful. <laughs> um, but it was, you know, on a scale of one to ten, it tasted like a five or six. But yeah. the protein powders at that time, um, 
what was it, like Shackley and Wiener oh, yeah, Protein and yeah, stuff? Yeah. They were tasting Awful. like a one, Hot man. stuff, <laughs> maybe. maybe hot, stuff was, <laughs> hot, hot stuff was our competitor. Um, but back then, uh, people really noticed it, that uh, it produced a result. But also back then, you had a phenomenon that I became a beneficiary of that um, not very many people today would, would know about. Back in the 80s, bodybuilders didn't use as many supplements because steroids weren't very illegal. They were just, sure. you know, they were they were not controlled substances. Sure. Any gym that you went to where people were really lifting weights, mm-hmm. you you just you know ask around and you, you get some steroids and Diana Ball and you get ten bucks for some uh, pills and That's so wild to me. <laughs> yeah, and it really was. And Arnold did it, and yeah. Frank Zane did it, and and uh, all the bodybuilders it was just the norm. at that time. Yeah. Now we didn't know at that time, you know, the the health risks, and and we didn't know at that time that it would become such a controversial issue. It yeah, just wasn't. Sure. But in 1988, Ben Johnson got busted for using steroids in the 1988, um, you know, Seoul Olympics. Yep. And that became he took the rap for, like, every steroid <laughs> yes, user. I mean, I feel kind of bad sure. for the guy because yeah. guaranteed, what, there's, like, six guys racing? And you tell me he's the only one taking drugs? Yeah, Man, get yeah. the hell out of here. I feel oh, bad, gosh, but yeah. he changed our industry forever. Yeah. That's what so, spanned a lot. Um, it became a, a global inter, uh, media, you know, storm, and, and the media just yeah. loved the issue. I was, of, like, in fourth or fifth grade, and I can still remember it. It was that big of a <laughs> yeah, deal. Okay. I remember the cover of Sports Illustrated, Sports Illustrated right? Cover, I'll yeah. never forget yeah. that. It's like a it's like a kind of a monumental time in our industry, yeah. for sure. And so uh, the, the demand uh, for something that would help you build muscle, help you get better results faster from your workouts, or that competitive edge was still there. Yeah. But uh, all of a sudden now you couldn't get steroids. And you, you couldn't, uh, you know, it was by by the early 90s, the market had dried up. You know, mm-hmm. the gray market and black market for uh, muscle building uh, medicines had, had dried up. Mm-hmm. Um, and all of a sudden now you come out with a product that you can get at the health food store that is developed by a doctor that's been proven in scientific studies to help you get better results faster from your workouts. Yeah. And everybody just jumped on it. It was really uh, part of a, of, a, of a process that came out of that, you know, what happened in the late 80s. So I got really lucky. And, the timing um, was impeccable. Yeah. Really. And, and, and bodybuilding was really catching on then, too, yeah. you know. So, so we'll talk about, like, how it kind of changed from the metrics days. You're on a little bit of a ride. Obviously, right. it went well. How do you then go from metrics to starting EAS, which stands for? <laughs> Experimental and Applied Sciences. Okay. And now, so a lot yeah. of people don't know that, so that's why I wanted to yeah, what no, you Yeah, no, they don't, they don't use that anymore. Yeah. Um, Abbott, who was up the street here in, in Columbus. Yeah, they um, have no cool how, how – no, <laughs> they have no clue we're even here. Uh, it's so funny. I'm not sure they know they're they, – They're there. They don't even know if they own EAS. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what? Uh, yeah, so how does it go from <laughs> – you know, so here's my first experience with the AS, and Josh, I want to hear yours too. Yep. So I'm watching the NFL, and Shannon Sharp's taking mm-hmm. off taking off his helmet, and this isn't much different than what, how we did our marketing. We stole that from you too, but you know, uh, <laughs> Shannon Sharp takes his helmet off, and he's got a beanie, or he's got it on his collar. I can't remember. I think and it, it's I remember collar, collar, right? Yeah. It says yeah, EAS, both, yeah. or he's yeah. taking, or yeah, both on purpose, <laughs> intentional. Mm-hmm. Takes off his uh, you know shoulder pads, and he's jacked to the max, mm-hmm. and blah blah blah. And, and then I'm thinking, you can't Google search it, but you see it when you, you know, guys are taking creatine right. at, at the high school, whatever. And so it's like you were onto that, and it was like clicked in right there. When did you first see it, Josh? The first supplement I ever used was phosphagen, grape phosphagen. Yeah. My freshman year of college. Just basic, yeah, 100 grams for yeah. 50 bucks or 80 bucks. Or something. It's the first thing I ever used. 80 bucks, big margin. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but you didn't know how hard it was to get, man. Well, yeah, because you helped cook the first batch of creatine, right? Well, we we were all trying – there was a number of us trying to figure out how to make it back in the early 90s. And Mm -hmm. it it, it, – gosh, it was a pricey process. (laughs) So you used it. Yeah, the first product I ever used, I I read your – your brother's uh, bench workout yeah. online is like the first experience yeah. I ever had with training. Sean and had I, a bench workout online, and I uh, and yeah, I, actually there was a first. Uh, he was doing like, some stuff on a computer. My brother was yeah, and he'd start putting workout programs, yeah. and there add, were little things on it. On that. add fifty pounds yeah, to your bench press yeah. in ten weeks. I was he was sold, for, yeah. and I'd go by his office and I'd say, "Stop screwing around with that stupid thing, man! It's just a fad." <laughs> This internet thing. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows about that? Stop wasting your time. Start <laughs> writing memos. It was that, that, the phosphogen, and the, the, the supplement review book. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and then I was hooked on supplements. Well, I think that's the other thing, too, is like in the EAS, you dug in so deep in education. Yep. 
between that and transformation, which again, leading with content, which is where right. I got it from, you're adding value to the customer, not even asking them to buy a product. Right. I would rather you have, if you come to Muscle Farm and you do a workout, you do a program and you have a, you have a good result, then you're going to feel almost obligated to give me a try. And then right. once, once you try combat, you're not going anywhere else. <laughs> I mean, it's really the same type of thing. So it's really yeah. like you just pretty much uh, pioneered it. Yeah, I I, um, I always believed in teaching programs and not just selling products. Metrex was a program. You got a good, uh, I mean, Dr. Conley had very very uh, passionate beliefs about the importance of certain type of weight training. Mm-hmm. Um, and I taught that method of weight training. And he had a, a very passionate belief about, you know, how you should feed the body in addition to taking your supplements. Mm-hmm. And we taught that. And that's what I taught the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, I would go down there and just implement the Metrex program. And that became, you know, some of my EIS technology and the Myoplex product and then creatine. Um, and I would take that to the Denver Broncos and, and uh, you know, really just, just teach them those programs. But they work for Shannon Sharp, who was one of the strongest, oh, best-built guys. Freak. He'd do 400 pounds for reps um, during the season on a bench press. The boss. And Jeez. those guys had uh, – Shannon Sharp, I know, for example – Never had alcohol, never had any muscle building drugs, um, always lived, uh, you know, just a simple, clean life and worked out basic workouts, man, D- uh, dumbbells and barbells and, and basic supplements. I sent a picture to uh, um, Maria the other day about uh, when I was on the cover of Fitness RX with my kids, Shannon was on the next month mm-hmm. and, and he's like, you know, 45 or something. And he's, I got a picture of him holding the, my cover yeah. and I sent her the blog post and said, it's unreal because this this meant something different to me because this is Bill's main guy when yeah. he's marketing and now he's on a cover years later holding me and yeah. it was like it just blew my mind. <laughs> but what circle. I loved about yeah full circle what I loved about reading about Shannon was he takes his meals on the road with him his but he takes yeah. care of his body at a high level and that's why he looks so young right and that's why he had to be an easy guy to endorse with whenever you're right. EAS and uh, I mean it had to be nice to have yeah. a guy like that and John uh, Elway obviously yeah we had. Um uh, God, we had athletes from uh, all over the place. We had Mike Piazza and Carl Malone. Piazza's from, a stud, huh? <laughs> and um, I didn't. You pay had the mailman. Any, yeah, we had Carl. Dude, Malone. I, I didn't. I didn't, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't pay anybody. Um, it was all product deals. <laughs> Nuh-uh. It was all. Uh, I, I would have great parties. Oh yeah, I heard about that. That's <laughs> a, hey, I think that's a different podcast. <laughs> Sold for the athletes. <laughs> yeah, <I> sold out. <laughs> the athletes' company. <laughs> yeah, no, we we, uh, we would have great parties. And matter of fact, right here in Columbus, Ohio, we had our greatest party ever at this place called the Mecca. Yeah. Uh, back in the day, and we'd rent the whole uh, club, and we'd just have a lot of fun um, with all the. That's uh, what I heard. W- with our team <laughs> and, and and the athletes and and uh, yeah. Um, but other than that, we would put. Uh, I mean, we were we were on them. We yeah. you know we would put. You uh, were actually doing their their yeah. schedules, their protein, everything. Right. We had we had people. You know, I would train the trainers um, at the sports teams, and then I would go down and work with them, and then we'd develop a whole program and put together. I mean, it was like a, a you know a toolbox that you had your you know take this at eight a.m. This at noon. It's beautiful. This um, two two of these at at night, and so there was a full prescription. And not only did we give them the 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 products, the supplements, and the programs, um, but we gave the assistance to implement them. So we'd yeah. have people travel with them. So can you here's imagine? Your, here's wait, your yeah. phosphagen. Yep. Here's this. Yep. Here's your myoplex. Yep. You take wow. two of these pills. They feel take special. You didn't have to pay them. Yeah. yeah. So it was a full concierge um, wow. sports like that. supplementation. That's and, pretty cool. And those guys appreciate, um, you know, the 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 uh, the time. Yeah. Uh, Savings and and it's payment it. without paying them. Yeah. I mean, it just the, the now service. Shannon Sharp did get, uh, for example, Shannon Sharp got um, 18 minutes mm-hmm. of branded time in the three hours before the Super Bowl in 1998 uh, <laughs> January. That's <laughs> worth a little bit of money. Yeah. <laughs> so during the Super Bowl, he was wearing the logo. Well, I mean, and he did. Uh, they did interviews, special interviews with John Elway, Shannon Sharp, and the guys. Sure. But um, so I bought it. I I, I said I said well. I, I owe you for this. I got, I'm gonna get you a gift. Um, and uh, after he I got heard back, about this gift. <laughs> I think I want this. Gift. After he <laughs> got back from the the Pro Bowl, he he wanted a Rolls Royce convertible, and so I had it in his uh, driveway when he got. Him. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, and, and and I got I got gifts for some of the other guys too. But that was really something that was just we were having fun. They they created so much value and they. Oh yeah. Yeah, and then after that, you know, Metrix did some. Uh, Oh, I'm sorry, EAS did some endorsement deals. But the first couple of years, it was all just based on 
um, people having fun. Well, you were the first, uh, you know, in just this industry. Everyone else, it was, we only work with bodybuilders. We only right. work with pro bodybuilders. You're the first guy, first company to, to open it up to, you know, professional big-time athletics to right. really open that door to the, to the public. More was mainstream. It, was, that, was that behind your thinking, like this is how I can open it up to everybody? Well, and again, it, it sure did um, open up, you know, uh, sports supplements yeah. to, you know, more mainstream uh, markets yeah. and really made it out, put it out there more like Gatorade Absolutely. or more like, sure. more like Nike. And I think Muscle Farm. I wonder Farm, where we got this idea from. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Muscle Farm is, is really, you know, Muscle Farm is really like the, you know, kind of like the, the Nike of sports nutrition or the Under Armour of sports nutrition. And, was the whole plan. and um, Muscle Farm, you know, is going to be, you know, the uh, a company. I heard that, you're helping out with that now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, I get ten and a half dollars an hour, <laughs> so I want to get my twenty-two yeah. bucks after this interview. <laughs> what do you think? And I'll um, buy you a gift. I'll buy you a pack. So of I got gum. a question about the marketing. So obviously, we saw the stuff Shannon was wearing, yeah. or John. Did you intentionally say, "I know the camera's going to be on you. I want you wearing it"? Did that just happened by accident. No, it was all just uh, organic. Um, wow. And and they had the products in their locker rooms. Remember, after the oh, Super yeah, Bowl, you'd have yeah, sure. John Elway being interviewed yeah. in a big box of Myoplex back there. Mm-hmm. Now, the NFL doesn't allow that anymore. Nike no. doesn't allow that anymore. Of course anymore. not. Well. <laughs> no, I know why. Yeah. <laughs> and you yeah, guys have yeah. – you, you guys get some – You ruined that for us, Bill. <laughs> yeah. That's but, classic. Uh, um, I'm a startup guy. So, for, for example, people say, why didn't I stay with Metrox or EAS? Is that uh, my business expertise is getting something started. Yeah. Um, so – the, this Body for Life book came from uh, the non-physical world, the world of just ideas. Sure. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I transform that and land it in a physical book, and then I, I promote it and, and get it going. And then I'm uh, that's kind of done with my expertise. So Metrix had reached a point where, you know, it needed a real business structure, mm-hmm. and, and that wasn't my forte. So um, Dr. Conley, um, you know, uh, we, we kind of worked things out where – I was going to move on to EAS, start a new company, um, and he uh, went with, uh, you know, he got some business people to, to run his, mm-hmm. his thing. But I'm, I'm not a business person. I'm an entrepreneur and a startup guy. So with uh, EAS, you know, I, I found out about creatine probably in 1992 mm-hmm. and started doing some tests with it and researching it and using it. Um, and I, and it I knew that sports nutrition forever. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Yeah. So tell, talk about, I know Maria shared this with me once. Tell me about the first batch of creatine oh, yeah. <laughs> that you, you got around, perfected, figured yeah. out. Like how the hell did that happen? Yeah. Well, um, the creatine research came out of the Karolinska Institute in Sweden. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, there was some research on phosphate loading by the doctor who developed carbohydrate loading. Okay. And so a lot of people look at the loading, uh, it, I can look back at the loading dose yeah. idea of creatine. And, does that and, work? Well, we'll just I, ask this guy. He made yeah. creatine. I but, think it works. But. Yeah. But it, 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 uh, the concept of phosphate loading was mm-hmm. developed by the guy who developed carbohydrate loading okay. as a performance you know, uh, enhancer. So he um, he was uh, keen on that uh, that style. But, you know, you're, you 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 don't really have to load if you're just looking for long-term results, but if you've got an event or uh, you want to get uh, so it can your get strength. more saturated, obviously yeah. with loading, which I always believed in, yeah, so for sure. Um, but back then, uh, you know, we were reading about creatine, and, and there were some small uh, amounts available, but to do the clinical studies, much less introduce it to a, a market, mm-hmm. you had to figure out how to get it manufactured. And I'm not a scientist; I was not a biochemist. And had no expertise in this stuff, but as an entrepreneur, mm-hmm. uh, my job was to get shit done. Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, the Solution <laughs> to the problem. How do we make <laughs> as much creatine as possible? <laughs> get it done. <laughs> and sell yeah. it to the world. <laughs> <laughs> Every, the, the whole assignment was, don't tell me what you can't do. Yeah. Tell me what you can. Show me the money. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we figured out how to, how to get uh, creatine made. And I remember the first batches of it were being produced in... What well, looked like, you know, probably like a meth lab kitchen. <laughs> Bill Phillips created yeah, I mean, it was, in a meth lab. It was in a, it <laughs> this was is great. A, it was this guy who, who uh, had a warehouse and, and, and some beakers and that was cooking awesome. it up. Yeah. And I, I love it. I couldn't believe that, that we could actually uh, make it that way. And we used it for clinical studies. And Maybe um, the dudes down here in Newark that are doing mm, that, they could cook creatine uh-huh. now. Creatine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Nowadays, uh, you know, millions of of tons of creatine are bought and sold every year around the around the globe but back then we were looking at how do we get the next thousand grams wow and um yeah but it, it really uh, changed sports nutrition like you said forever yeah and it's one of the most studied uh ingredients that you know works on the planet impact, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and not just for um 
not just for muscles. You know, the thing that I'm excited about being uh, over 40 and now over 50 mm -hmm. is that creatine is, is probably more effective at uh, supporting the health and strength of brain yep. cells than Absolutely. it is muscle cells. Um, the, the studies that show that it prevents a neurodegenerative process, mm -hmm. slows the neurodegenerative process, are, are actually more impressive than the studies that show it enhances uh, muscle performance. So for those of us over 40, and you'll get there someday yourself. I'm heading that way. <laughs> be 37 this year. <laughs> you, okay, yeah. So yeah you're, you're, I'm coming. You're getting there. Yep. <laughs> um, uh, aging is a neurodegenerative process. Sure. And if you, the quality of your life is going to be the quality of your body, mm -hmm. and at some point, the quality of your brain health. And so creatine is one of those supplements that is stunning mm -hmm. in, in what it can do for the whole body. And the scientists in the, in the medical field are very keen to this, too. And where creatine is going is pharmaceutical medicine. Sure. Um, there's a, a creatine just got through uh, stage three clinical trials um, with a big pharmaceutical company that's introducing it as a medicine to treat Parkinson's wow. and Alzheimer's and other um, advanced neurodegenerative wow. diseases like Huntington's disease. Bodybuilders, of course, are ahead of the game. You know, we get a bad rap for being meatheads, <laughs> yeah. but the average bodybuilder is so much smarter in diet and nutrition than people realize they have no clue. Yeah. It's amazing. Well, because some guy educated him. <laughs> no. <laughs> Ar Ar yeah, Arnold. Some guy did. It was it was Arnold. Arnold's first book, uh, what was it, Education of a Bodybuilder? He saw that sitting on your yeah. desk, Josh. Yeah, that's right. And I said, that's, a, that's a, the first version of Body for Life. I mean, everything that Arnold uh, taught me in that book mm -hmm. is just as true today. And that's a neat thing about once you learn a basic weight training, mm -hmm. basic nutrition, and, and even supplementation, it's, it worked 30 years ago. Still it's going to work 30 years yeah. from now. And yeah. so while just depends a lot on what of your goal is, a lot of these other fads come and go, but lifting weights and uh, feeding your body, not starving it is, is the key. Absolutely. So talk about how it goes from you're at EAS, you know, you want to start this uh, contest where people can change their body, which you know, everybody and their brother uses now, but you know, I want to know how did that start uh, in the business? How impactful was it? You know, what was the speed of right. the impact to the business? And then what was it at the height? And I know the number, but I want right. to hear you say it and no internet. Let's, right. let's keep that in mind. Right. <laughs> so go right. ahead. Um, so everybody today has heard of these 12 week, con 12 week transformation some, challenge, right? Some guy made this up. <laughs> uh, yeah. So everybody, everywhere you go, they got a 12 week challenge and even today, they don't even call a marathon a marathon. They call it a challenge. Yeah. And uh, I noticed, like, in the advertising and consumer products, everything's a challenge. Like, they've got mm -hmm. the Activia challenge. You, yeah. you have this yogurt for two weeks, and yeah, if you don't go to the bathroom, you get your money back. And, all <laughs> and I'm like going, God, is this thing? Like, where's my stipend at? Is this yeah. thing watered down? <laughs> I, <enough? should> trademark <laughs> I mean, how watered down could it be? But um, the whole idea of doing a 12-week before and after contest came out of, um, some pictures that I had and, and I'm just like everybody else. And yeah. when I let go of the exercise, uh, discipline and, and I, and I eat like my body wants me to eat. Yeah. Um, I gain fat and I lose muscle and I look just like everybody else. Yeah. Um, and back in the early nineties, I'd kind of let my, uh, guard down and I, I ended up gaining some weight and looking kind of, uh, frumpy. And, um, uh, I had, uh, 12 weeks to get in shape before I went on a Bahamas vacation ah. for Christmas. So it wasn't like a prep for a bodybuilding show 12 weeks. <laughs> like, that's not where you got the idea uh, from originally. It, no, it wasn't scientific at all. It wasn't a bodybuilding method. Um, I took a picture uh, on my birthday, which is uh, towards the end of September, mm -hmm. and I had um, until Christmas to um, get in great shape because I was going to the Bahamas. 12 weeks isn't even I mean, scientifically <laughs> put together. This is blowing my no, mind 12, right now. No, 12, 12 <laughs> weeks comes from the distance between my birthday Before and Bill's Christmas. vacation. So this whole industry that has 12-week challenges comes because Bill's going on vacation. Yeah, I love it. So, um, <laughs> so I, got in, uh, I got in real good shape. <laughs> and I had these before and after pictures, and I'm an enthusiastic person, and I run around and showing everybody, <laughs> yeah. look at this, look at this, look at this, and people would say one thing. How do I do that? How do I, how do, I do that? Oh, and so baby. the whole thing was, um, well, wait a minute. How do you do that? So I'd start writing it down. Then I'd Xerox copy the pictures, and I'd write the exercise nutrition on the front, and then turn it over right on the back. And that became the Body for Life book. So my little instructions about how to go from here to here, you know, became cool. the, the, the manual. And here's a bunch of the pictures inside for you guys. You can still buy this at Barnes & Noble's, right, Bill? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. You can see all the pictures in there. Uh, yeah, and um, so uh, the idea of doing a challenge uh, came out of uh, going to uh, one of these bodybuilding contests, 
um, where they have the trade show. And back in the day, like even at the Arnold, you had a card table mm -hmm. and a little banner in front. Nowadays, you guys have I a um, you guys have a booth there. Muscle Farm has a it's like a, condo. a booth there. No, it looks like uh, <laughs> you're colonizing Mars or something. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's got this whole huge structure and it's evolved. It, it's crazy yeah. how that that event's evolved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I had a card table and a banner. <laughs> it seemed to work out okay though. Yeah. yeah. But let me tell you what happened. Um, people would come up and say, hey, I read your magazine or I read your newsletter, and I really like, uh, I, I really like it. Mm -hmm. And one person after another after another, I would meet, shake hands, and I, I love meeting people. I love yeah. talking to people. And, and and uh, and, I, and I really I love people. And I, and I care about how they look and feel, and I was hoping to see so many people go, yeah, I did the workout, look at me. And mm -hmm. I saw 600 people over a period of a couple of days and I'm telling you, 90% of them look like they'd never heard about weightlifting before. Wow. And yeah. I was like, and I... And but this I, is your new customer. Yeah. And I flew home, um, and I was going, what in the hell? What what on earth is is missing? Yeah. And I realized that, you know, knowing is not enough. Mm -hmm. It's knowing and doing. And I call that yeah. crossing the abyss between where you are and where you want to be by applying your knowledge. And I said, well... Knowledge let, bomb. <laughs> <laughs> let me give them an incentive. I said, what if I paid you to get in shape? Or no, what if I offered up something that was really exciting and fun um, and motivating? And, and uh, I thought of this red Lamborghini that I had. Yeah, and let's just give out, <laughs> let's give away a Lamborghini. <laughs> well, I had uh, some of my metrics uh, blessings. Um, I got some money and I went out and did what every 25-year-old uh, kid would do with uh, the first batch of money and uh, bought a bright red Lamborghini. So it was your Lamborghini you gave away. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and I'm, I'm looking at it in the driveway and I said, I said, you know what? This I is said, awesome. If you Just guys kidding. will actually follow these programs uh, <laughs> that, um, you know, I said, whoever gets the best results after putting these programs to work, send, send me your before and after pictures. Tell me how you did it. Tell me how you benefited from this, and um, uh, I'll pick the best one and, and uh, give you this $250,000 Italian uh, monster. Josh, uh, we're giving away your car. Is that okay? Yeah. No. We'll, get about, <laughs> we'll get three entries. <laughs> so how many entries did you have on the first so, one, Bill? Yeah, the first year we did, uh, we heard from 50,000 people, and by the wow. third year we had, had a— Hold uh, on. 50,000 yeah. people. Yeah. Mail order. How or, did, how did right. you get the word how they out? Even, how did they how, even how enter? How did they find out Through the it? magazine. Uh, yeah. okay. How many so, was your readers, your readership at that point? We had um, about— For five, Muscle Media, right? Uh, we got up to 500,000 a month, uh, readers a month. That's probably— Wow. You have more people on that following you on the Instagram. But it's just the—well, Twitter, but it's the— Twitter? Yeah. Just the— just Twitter, Quick Muscle Farm Press. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's just the fact that how it's evolved. But still, you could hit 500,000 people in in a concentrated. So they would just fill it out and mail it in or call yeah, or. Yeah. Yeah. No, they would call. We'd have 800 yeah. number. But okay. wow. um, by the third year, we had a million people, you know, take that challenge. That's and, just absurd. And you go in any gym in America and, you know, you'd yeah. find hands full of people that, that were doing the challenge. And it was really fun. And all of a sudden now, we took bodybuilding. Um, and instead of just looking at the stage, you know, mm -hmm. where you go to a contest and you got 25 people up on stage that are, you know, been applying their knowledge yeah. and get, are in great shape. Um, I looked at that and, I, and I, I, I turned around and I said, there's 25 people on stage, but there's 2,500 people watching. That's what you thought your customer yeah. was, but so really I, it's the I, person <laughs> behind you. Yeah. yeah, I turned my back on wow. the bodybuilding yeah. and opened up to the audience and I said, Come on, guys. Let's get in the game. You don't have to get on the stage and bodybuild. You don't yeah. have to get in a powerlifting contest. I want you to be the best that you can be, and we're going to compare your results uh, to you. Man, send awesome. me your picture here and send me your picture there. And and it just took off. What, a so million what, people. So what principles did you, you know that you learned 30 years ago or yeah. that were there 30 years ago? What did you want to teach them? What, what were those principles that you wanted to make sure they learned each time they, they did this process? Right. Well, Knowing is not enough is yeah. the number one lesson. The number one lesson. And, and um, today I have a, a transformation camp, you mm -hmm. know, in Colorado. And every month we have three days and we bring in people from all over the country, from Columbus, Ohio and New York and Canada. And mm -hmm. sometimes people even come from Europe or Australia. That's cool. Um, and they all, many doctors, we've had over 100 physicians come through our program in Colorado. Wow. And, and it just, you really see firsthand that knowing is not the answer. They need application <laughs> bad. Knowing and doing is the is, is the yeah. answer. That's the number one thing I wanted to teach people by doing these challenges. Yeah. Yeah. Get the knowledge and then put the knowledge to work. Stop mm -hmm. procrastinating. Stop making up excuses. And stop 
you know, um, getting in your own way. Stop, um, you, you know, stop, stop stopping yourself. <laughs> yeah. But because you need to allow yourself to experience the success. And many people in, in bodybuilding had to break through that level. Sure. Um, I don't know if you ever did, but the, the, the biggest barrier is believing that you can't do it. Well, I think that's a lot, but I think also people struggle with the goal part of it. And so when you have a prize of your Lamborghini you're pulling yeah. out of your garage, that becomes their goal. So, like, you had a universal goal for a million people. I have my goals. Josh has his goals. Everybody, you have your goals now. Everybody has that that's successful, but the masses of people might not. Right. And so you said, I just created your goal for you. I'm teaching you how to do it. So now you're knowing it, and you have, I think, the ultimate thing, which is the goal of winning. Right. And so that's what moves people's feet. Right, and this this is a very good point actually, because um, any personal trainers that are listening to this, um, anybody that's trying to motivate uh, behavioral change, because um, that's what it is really, yeah. behavioral, behavioral change. change. Here's what I've. It took me a long time to learn this, guys, but it's a, it's another one of the basic lessons that I, I really have to share with people, and that is that um, in in fitness and in weight loss and uh, even in personal growth and self transformation. People are motivated by the prize, not the penalty. Absolutely. So a guy can go to the doctor right across the street. Mm -hmm. He can sit with the doctor, and the doctor can say, you know, your cholesterol is 320, your um, blood sugar is high, mm -hmm. you're at high risk for cancer. And honestly, Joe, if you don't do something to change your life and start exercising, start eating healthy, um, and start taking care of yourself and reduce the stress, if you don't do that, mm -hmm. I don't think that you'll be alive in a year. Yeah. I think you'll die of a heart attack. The guy will walk out of the doctor's office, walk across the street to McDonald's, order a Big Mac, and tell the tell the clerk at, Big, <laughs> at McDonald's going. what the doctor told him. Yeah. But if I take that same person and I say, here's the 12-week program, and if you finish it, I'm going to give you this T-shirt. The guy's like, woo! Yeah, T-shirt. We've seen it at the Arnold. It's amazing what <laughs> yeah, people do yeah. for free T-shirts. Yeah. <laughs> They'll tackle each other for a free T-shirt. Uh, much less uh, a car or a trip to Hawaii. Or a thousand dollars, or or recognition and, sure. uh, in, in inclusion in a in a club or a group. Um, so people are motivated by the prize, yeah, not the penalty. And that motivation is what kicks in to apply the knowledge. I constantly it's, talk about thing all the time on social media is that people ask me, how do you stay so motivated? Why well, I, I know what my purpose and my goal is right. every every year, every day, every whatever. And so it's not going to be the same as yours, but you have what yours is and you have to find what that is or you just aimlessly kind of roll through life and you don't really know what you're going. You created a community and gave right. them a goal, but I teach constantly that you have to find what that is for you too, personally. And right. so that's one takeaway that you showed how you could do it for a community and I'm attempting to do the same thing. And w I think we're going to do some pretty cool stuff coming up together too but that's that's one thing that you got to find within yourself what that means and what yeah. it is and yeah. you can grow tremendously from that right and i think that's what um if you can lead people into it by you know if like like you you kind of lure them or or uh, coax them into it it's just like come on come on come on come on come on come yeah. on uh come to the top of the mountain with me yeah and it's just what they learn by climbing the mountain that that's when they start to internalize it and say you know I realized by the time I got to the top of the mountain or to the 12-week mark that I, I wasn't doing this for the car or the money by that or time, yeah. you know, the recognition at all. I was doing it because you know of those internal reasons. Absolutely. And every, oh, I can't tell you, that was the epiphany for me uh, to go into transformation because you would see some people, not all people, but some people would go through the physical change and go through... Um, an inner change. They would yeah, have a, a sure. change of attitude, a change of heart, a change of motivation, yeah. and find you know this spark and this energy and this purpose. Well, let's talk about how this then, like this, your heart was in the right place when you did this. There's no doubt in my mind. But because of that, your business benefited. I like you told me. It's real. How many total pages in this book talk about supplements? <laughs> One. One. <laughs> One page in this entire book talks about supplements right. that led to, what was the height of EAS before you left? Well, Bell? you know, we were growing fast. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, the company was, you know, today there's companies that are doing, uh, that, that are bigger than EAS was. It, it, it's, but it was it's well started. over 100 million. Yeah, it was about 100 million. And, um, it's about. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, it was growing fast. And, 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 you know, we didn't do infomercials. We you know, I never got on Oprah to market the book. That'd have been cool. Um, it would have been cool, <laughs> but I mean, there was none of these, you know, conspicuous things that um, it was grassroots. Yeah. When people made the change, 
at least 10 people around them said, uh, what the hell did you do? Yeah, yeah. You just created Spread a million like that, Bill yeah. Phillips billboards walking <laughs> word, around word town. Of mouth. Yeah, yeah. Word of mouth. And, and so that's really kind of the way EAS grew is um, – we didn't have uh, a sophisticated marketing plan. We didn't have actually any marketing plan. And the company was run on goals. The goal was, how do we get 100,000 people start to finish on this program? So w- the only meetings I had was that. Let me write, th- hey, let me write <laughs> that down. <laughs> what are we going to do? You know, and, and that was in 1998. Wow. Is that we're trying to get 100,000 people because you knew if you got, uh, officially got 100,000 before and after pictures and stories. Um that, you know, 10 times as many people had done the program. A lot of people oh, just do, yeah. they play the home game. Mm-hmm. They don't send in their photos sure. or, or whatever. Um, and then the next year, we, we you know, we were going for um, um, more than that. But we knew that if we got 100,000 people through the program, the company, you know, would be successful and it'd be profitable and, mm-hmm. and we'd all have a lot of fun and the company would grow. You know, we created 300 jobs there in Colorado. That's and awesome. um yeah, that uh, we talk about the Belichick coaching tree, yeah. the guys from the industry, oh, the guys sure. we have at Muscle Farm, guys are all spread yeah. out through the industry, have come from under Bill's uh, kind of watch back in the day. Yeah, it's kind of like the, the successful NFL coach, and then yeah. all of a sudden, Absolutely. you look around the NFL, there's nine coaches that worked <laughs> under <laughs> Coach Belichick, but it's great. I love it when people succeed, and I love you, I love seeing you guys succeed, um, and I see uh, so much uh, of what I was doing in you. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Probably because I learned it from you. <laughs> I think you <laughs> portion do, of it. <laughs> I think you do a lot of it uh, uh, better, all the stuff that you do with Instagram and, and the daily workouts and, mm-hmm. and all the intensity that you put into that and the passion that you have for that is, um, is awesome. And I, and I follow the workouts, and I you – know, I don't uh, squat every day because I have a knee injury, but I did the bench uh, every day, and I got as I told you I got as strong as I'd been yeah. in 15 years following the, Pretty cool. the, that idea. Yeah. Well, it just goes to show. So, like, you know, I took the hardest exercise that no one wants to squat, do, yeah. and created a whole community that made and they do it every day now. Word of mouth. Yeah. So it just goes to show, like, you know, that you can rally the troops if it has a single goal and there's somebody leading the charge. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's being successful in it, you know? Right. So you're a leader. And, and that's what we need more of. We need more people uh, leading with clarity and, and, and giving people programs and supplement programs. And being and, real. It's not like some bullshit ad that they don't even right. take the supplements. It drives me crazy. Right. <laughs> we, and we, we need more of that. We need more people who are real, uh, really walking the walk out there teaching. Because now, you know, the supplement business, you can make some good it's money. Real. And yeah. so you got business. That's what I heard. <laughs> you got business people in the supplement industry sure, now. of course. And um, it's so funny because you, you know, when you when you meet them or see them, honestly, it looks like they never worked out a day in their life. That's why I thought right. I had a shot, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, man, if I could just get in this and try to do some stuff no. like this guy named Bill Phillips yeah, did, man, right. I'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're doing a great job. And um, I like, uh, I, w- I want to be involved in uh, Muscle Farm first to make that $10.5 an hour that we were Absolutely. talking about. Absolutely. Yeah. That's but, a good rate, I think. <laughs> yeah. But my passion now is uh, teaching uh, folks uh, over 40. Mm-hmm. Um, and like I said, you'll be there at some point, but nobody's talking to us. Yeah. You know, all the um, all the discussion is, is geared toward guys in their 20s. And, sure. and, and I loved that discussion when I was in my 20s um, because I got... You know, I, I, the whole muscle building and bodybuilding message is, is really kind of wears out after uh, a certain point sure. because you, you have different motivations. Um, I used to say, you know, people used to say in the Body for Life days, uh, there was this saying that I want to look good naked. Yeah. And as you get, you know, over 40 and especially over 50, you'd be happy if you just look good in your clothes. <laughs> <laughs> we got to set goals. <laughs> Fuck I love it. it. Age brings more realistic goals. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but you know what? Some people that uh, feel, you know, their self-esteem's hit that you're seeing at your transformation center, yeah. you're like, can I just wear a T-shirt and not have my stomach stick out? They probably yeah. are happy with yeah. that, right? Flat stomach is the new ripped, man. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I got guys that, and, and uh, I got so many guys that come in with these big bellies, and mm-hmm. hopefully we'll show a picture or two. Yeah. Um, uh, big bellies, and it's terrible for your heart, and, it's, mm-hmm. and, it, and it feels awful, and it makes everyday life, you know, a pain in the ass because you, at some point, some of the guys that used to be in good shape have trouble bending over tie their shoes. Yeah. And that's true. Yeah, whether you absolutely. played in the NFL or whether you were just a college athlete. Doesn't matter. Um, and so my message to them, uh, based on my own experience, is that, you know, you really can get back on track and you yeah. can get back into fitness mm-hmm. and you can do it for your health mm-hmm. and your body. You know, you're going to get a better body if you work out. Not everybody's going to get as ripped and, 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 uh, and built as you, mm-hmm. but everybody has a better body. 
What's uh, what is the takeaway? I know you kind of touched on it, but like if you're sitting there, they're listening to this podcast, watching us on YouTube, and they're they just feel like they're just shit out of luck right now, <laughs> and they don't know where to start. Yeah. They're afraid to go to the gym. Hopefully, they don't join Planet Fitness. They don't know, <laughs> so they eat pizza on Fridays or whatever they give you there. So what what are they? What would be the first step? What would Bill Phillips sit down and say? Do this now. Yeah. Action. We have a program <laughs> <laughs> that has been proven to work in over a million people. Barnes and Nobles, <laughs> get it on Amazon, Body for Life. If you can't find this one, get the Would education you say get of educa- a body. Educated first, Bill. Um, whether you're, uh, you know, th- there, there's hundreds of thousands of guys and gals out there, uh, many of which that are following the Muscle Farm and, and uh, you know, a part of the muscle culture still. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, many others are just kind of weekend warriors and, yeah. and casual athletes. But what I encourage them is to get get back to basics. Sure. Get back to what worked before. And I tell you, man, what worked before will work again if you're yeah. willing to put in that 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 effort. And You uh, said it right there. Effort, yeah. a little sacrifice. Yeah, yeah. and sacrifice. And, uh, you know, you got to get away from that instant gratification lifestyle. Yep. And you got to go back to... Um, you know, working for something that, that pays off down the road, um, but doesn't feel good, you know, right now. And so when you have to change the way you're eating and you have to start doing those hard workouts again, you know, it's, uh, it takes discipline, it's effort, it's work, Mm -hmm. but, um, it's worth it. And I, I take people that are over 40, even over 50 and we bring them back in time. I'm telling you. It turns back the clock, don't it? It's It's the the only fountain of youth. Yeah. It's the only fountain of youth. Yep. And, and, uh, I will tell you this much. It might not be 12 weeks. Yeah. It might be more like 24 weeks. Yeah. But you it didn't take it. you only 24 weeks to get yeah. like that. That's yeah. why I always just tell my clients, like, hey, you've been doing this for like 10 years. Yeah. I can't change in two weeks. So yeah. how, how did how did you approach just kind of your philosophy or, or mindset that you teach people? You know, these these guys may have worked out at one time in their life, but, right. you know, that now they're over 40, things work differently in their body. I mean, how, how do you – or what do you teach them with training and supplementation and, and mindset, knowing it may take them a little longer? Right. Uh, what do you you know, teach and, them? and that's a good question, because what um, what do you need to know? Yeah. Um, because if you go back into it and your goal is that I want to get the same results I got before <laughs> when I did Body for Life or when I did a bodybuilding program or an, uh, or when I was an athlete in college, I want those same results in the same amount of time. Then you set yourself up for disappointment, and for sure. and and uh, you, we want to create a game that you can win. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So give yourself six months to turn it around. Um, give yourself six months. You know, and I, we've seen people lose 50 pounds of body fat, gain 10 pounds of muscle, and really truly turn their health um, completely around in, in in six months. So I don't really teach a 12 week program as much as I do a six month challenge now. Mm-hmm. And uh, give yourself a little more time. Um, but uh, believe you can do it, you know. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So it's, you know, obviously this has been a great career for you, Bill, and you've done all these things. But what I love about it now is that, one, you're back doing yeah. what, you're, what you just love, which is working with people, coming to right. Colorado, taking guys like us under your wing and kind of shepherding some new things for us. It's like it's got to be just a blast because, I mean, yeah. you were successful and, and made money to survive on. You're not going to yeah. starve anytime soon. But is it going to feel good to be able to just do really – which is the right. true entrepreneur goal. I'm the same way. I told Marie the other day, I just want to lift weights. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to lift weights. And I, and I know that because <laughs> at this at this office is – more than half of it's a weight room, <laughs> yeah. and everybody in here has got these jacked uh, up. Right, everybody in here has got. Once a, again, we have a goal sheet on yeah. the on the whiteboard back there. But is it got? It's got to feel good to be able to be <laughs> successful enough to really just have your life and do what you want to do with it. Because there's young entrepreneurs. We have a lot of college kids that listen to us, and so right. they're thinking, Corey, I want to do what you did, or I want to do what Bill did. I want to be in the industry. I want to be an entrepreneur. But at the end of the day. You followed your passion. It yeah. took some years, but now you're right back to it, and it never really, ch- never really, ch- you never really changed. Yeah, and and that's the that's the thing. So let me um, let me let me try to uh, sum that up. I started this um, because I wanted um, to to help people get enthusiastic about exercise when I was nine years old. Uh, the coach recognized that and said, uh, "Phillips, you're the exercise you're coach." You're a leader. <laughs> um, so 40 years later, you know that's the thing that still excites me the most. I think exercise is a linchpin habit. Yes, we got to eat right. Yes, we can get better results faster with the right supplements. Sure. Um, and yes, there's an aspect of of, of uh, goal setting and your mindset, but e- exercise is a linchpin habit. So if I can get people exercising, then I know that they're going to eat healthier, and I know they're going to be open to setting goals. Um, but uh, in all the years, 
you know, uh, I spent so much time in an office. Yeah. Uh, and not a cool office like you guys got. I mean, just an old. <laughs> Thanks, Bill. I mean, just a. I mean, it was a. Fa- it was I a, could. I can't live in a cubicle, buddy. Yeah, it was. A, <laughs> can't I, hold me. I had some. I had some fancy offices, but nonetheless, it's still, you know, it's a jar, man. And, yeah. and you're you're in the jar, and uh, you you got so much when you're a CEO of a company. You got so much accounting. You got yeah. um, legal issues. You got intellectual property right issues. You got science, the science a- aspect. You got the people aspect, human resources. It wore you out. Hiring, firing, uh, um, uh, managing. Um, these were never things that I was very good at. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I got by mm-hmm. because I was really enthusiastic. And like I said early on in this, I said, sometimes you don't have to be the best at something if you're very enthusiastic about yeah. it. Yeah. Enthusiasm and energy can kind of make up for uh, maybe a, a little bit less education and, yeah. and less and less scal- uh, skill or talent. Enthusiastic coal miner. Yeah. <laughs> right, but it's the enthusiasm <laughs> that people, you know, uh, that, pro- that propels them. So I did a lot of office work, and I kind of got out of that in my mid-30s. I sold the EAS when I was about 34, 35. Mm-hmm. And I did a number of things, traveled around the world and educated myself in other ways <clears throat> um, and learned things uh, that were not, you know, about exercise and, mm-hmm. and nutrition. And But um, retiring at 35, you realize that, that the money isn't the reason you were working to begin yeah. with. Yeah. Um, the passion. Yeah, it's that passion. I tell people all the time, I'd still be doing the same thing. It wouldn't matter if anybody knew yeah. me or not. Yeah. I mean, that's true. And you're 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 showing the yeah. same thing. Yeah. So, I what I um uh, realized is that, like I said, the the money isn't what you think it is. Um, I I gave uh you know so much money to so many people, and and uh, I saw some people use it as as a uh, as rope, you know, cut sure. to climb up to a better lifestyle. And some used it, you know, metaphorically to hang themselves. Mm-hmm. So money isn't necessarily going to change your life for the better. It can do actually do the opposite. Andrew Carnegie talked about that in all the books I read. Yeah. He said that there were certain family members he didn't even leave money to because he knew <laughs> they would they would have metaphorically yeah. hanged themselves. Okay. Yeah. So it, it, it for me, it didn't satisfy what was really uh, driving me. So I had looked forward for a long time to getting back to what I started with. And uh, by some events in the last few years, I had an injury. I overcame that. I got back into working out. And I realized, man, this is what I love to do, you yeah. know, help people get their body turned around. And it goes back to what I wanted to do um, as a kid. You know, I wanted to be a doctor. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to help people get healthy. And so now, more than ever before, we're not helping people get ready for a bodybuilding contest um, or get back out on the football field. We're helping people transform their health sure. and feel good about themselves rekindle a hobby mm-hmm. um, and get excited about something take care of yourself can be a lot of fun and uh, it doesn't have to be this you know this diet this painful sacrifice or whatever sure. we we try to make it um, uh, fun and challenging and and very rewarding so I had a friend uh, and a mentor who told me um, who uh, who's been uh, had a hit TV show and is a television mm-hmm. billionaire yeah and he told me something you he want said, to mention who that is well yeah, Jerry, I mean somebody <laughs> know they, yeah. Josh you might know who this guy yeah. is so Jerry Seinfeld comes out and works out <laughs> no big deal. <laughs> yeah my homie Jerry Seinfeld <laughs> yeah at the, he comes out and works at the transformation center um, and has done body for life for uh, 11 years now but he told me he said Billy goes never stop doing what made you the money in the first place even if you don't need the money. So he's just still, like comedy for him. Yeah, he still travels and does stand up. Yeah. Um, and uh, so getting back to the gym, back to working with people in person and doing our transformation camps is, has been the best part of my life. And I met my wife, Maria, that way. She came to one of my transformation camps and um, I've, I've helped uh, some people make some changes that, you know, that, that I just can't even um, I can't even believe. You know, I've seen some people uh, do some things that. Um, I didn't think were even possible in terms of overcoming cancer, wow. overcoming um, wow. ad- adversity that would, you know, that that would, uh, you know, crush a lot of people. Mm-hmm. So what, it, it's been fun. What's the feeling like for you when you see someone come in, you can tell that they're down or they're, yeah. in, they're in a, you know, a low place and they come out of there, you know, better physically, better mentally, better emotionally. What, what's that like for you to, to see that happen? You can't, there's not a dollar figure. Yeah. Your bill. Yeah. You know, I, I don't, I don't know why I don't, um, I, 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 I would say that, yeah, boy, I really did a good job there, yeah. but I just don't think that I do the job. Um, I can give people programs or instructions sure. and, and encouragement, and I can give people a lot of energy and, and enthusiasm uh, temporarily, 
but they go and do all the work. Yeah. They mm-hmm. make all the you know tough decisions. Um, and when somebody transforms their body um, and improves their life, like we see with these people here, yeah. um, it's theirs. Yeah. You know, so I said the neat thing about the owning that new body is that you earned it. Yep. And if I could give it to you, oh, you wouldn't take care of it. Yeah. If I could give it to you, you yeah. wouldn't. It wouldn't, wouldn't feel the same. It, yeah. So I, I feel good about what they did, mm-hmm. and I um, uh, you know, I feel, um, uh, you know, I, f- I feel like I'm I'm doing my work when I uh, can reach the people that I can reach mm-hmm. and, and give them these basic instructions yep. and uh, and give them a, a direction to go in. So cool. Yeah, Talk about, cool. Um, so I wasn't there when you first came to meet Brad at Muscle Farm, but, you know, I heard Bill Phillips is coming <laughs> to Muscle Farm. Obviously, we knew you lived in Denver, and both Brad and I, when we started the company, we talked about, we'll go and we'll do a newer age version of EAS, yeah. and, you know, Brad was real passionate coming from the NFL and me coming from yeah. fitness, and, and when you walked in, did it did it just give you a feel of very sim- similar type stuff? Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I'd, I'd follow what you guys have been doing at, 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 at Muscle Farm, and you know, I really, you know, I love uh, pro sports, you know, and yeah. I love, I mean, I know uh, to go from Arvada, Colorado, which is right next to Golden, sure. to the NFL, um, the way that Brad did, is a hell of an accomplishment. And and I just, oh, yeah. I always thought, man, I want to meet this guy, because here he comes from, uh, you He's know, an right interesting guy. The, yeah. I love Brad. And, um, <laughs> and, uh, and, and I had seen your stuff on, online, and, and when I came down to the office, um, and the and the lab. wait wait Bill Phillips googled me <laughs> just saying that go ahead <laughs> yeah well I um yeah I got my Instagram and then I really started getting, getting those workouts and I was like man can I do that workout <laughs> should I do that workout yeah there you go <laughs> but I and 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 I, and I love the exercises and stuff like that so I'm always looking for something new and and fun um plus you you really uh, are a good uh, coach you're a good teacher Thanks. and and I think that's important. Um, but the the Muscle Farm headquarters in uh, in Denver, they look very familiar. You know, we have a lot of that EAS spirit uh, mm-hmm. there. We and have some a, of your old guys yeah, too. We have yeah. some of the some of the great guys that worked at EAS are, are down there, and uh, the Muscle Farm brand is just you know it's it's a great brand. EAS is a great brand, mm-hmm. and uh, I think it has the, the potential to introduce a lot of people to fitness. And the thing I like about the supplement companies, EAS, Metrax, uh, Muscle Farm, is, is that they can do this for a person. Mm-hmm. They can get a person hooked. Let me tell you how. If you start working out and you start changing the way you're eating and you give it a good solid month or two and you don't see any results, you're done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and I can motivate you for a month, but only your own results are going to motivate you beyond that. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. At EAS, we started helping people get the supplement program, the nutrition program in place so that when they did work out, they saw results. Mm-hmm. And that's what I think is important. You have got to know what you're doing with supplements. You got to know what you're doing with eating to get results from workouts. You don't just go work out and automatically transform. Yeah. Workouts are just one part of it. So, I like the fact that if you apply the science of supplements, you can get better results faster. And getting better results faster is where the motivation comes from. So, yeah, I think sure. that a company like this can help not just athletes lengthen their career, not just perform better, maybe make the uh, uh, the team. Um, but I think it can help anybody who's into fitness get that enthusiasm back for it and start to get results. Whether you're getting stronger, yeah. whether you're recovering faster, whether you have more energy to work out, this is important stuff. Yeah, whatever your goal is. You got yeah. any other questions, Josh? Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I that's mean, we just knocked out an hour and 20 incredible. minutes. Just <laughs> knowledge bombs. <laughs> yeah. Well, Bill, uh, well, obviously we appreciate your time. We, we love having you at Muscle Farm. If you guys are listening on iTunes, Go give us a five-star rating on iTunes. If you're on YouTube, share this with your friends. I appreciate you, Josh Hatchett right there, social media director, Bill Phillips. We got Jay Azeltine, Sean Lott Films, Cody D, B. Perry, and Sean Lott hitting on the red. We are out. (laughs) Thanks, guys.